this. I go Have fix my truck. I'll find a new route. What I'll do is I'll get a third driver at the end of the stream. And that'll work out. really need to get that AI mod. Because these guys can't drive to save their lives. I think my patience is waning on traffic that doesn't know how to actually get on the highway, that type of stuff. But that's going to be another day's topic. I get on the 
this highway and get this get to this job so I can get this ball rolling for the stream. Get everything nice and good. And yeah, cutting over. Because you are going to stay there and take forever to get on the highway. Please give me a bigger one. Yes. Yes. I will do double. That's all I want. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, that's gonna be a okay. myself up on this one and then take it to the left all the way to the left there we go all right cut the wheel cut the wheel cut the wheel right there oh still not close enough Sink. There we go. Alright. Well then. Just take you out. There we go. Let's take you out. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me this large trailer to take for this journey. Oh, it's going to be fall day type fun. No one's there. No one's there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's cut across. Let me cut. Let me cut. Let me cut. There we go.
turn right. Alright, almost there. Trailers too. Nice. Cruise control is now enabled. And we're sitting back and relaxing. Well, we can actually go faster, never mind.
towards him. Good to see you, brother. It's been a long time, a long week. Hopefully everything's been smooth on your end as well. I was on earlier. I did my fourth part of my uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2 uh, stream. I didn't get to do that Thursday night. I had some things to take care of, but I knocked that one out. And now I am knocking out this stream. today, which was actually a nice change of pace, because I was streaming like around 2 in the afternoon, I was like, oh, normally I'm not even streaming that, that early, usually I'm always streaming around this time, I'm more of a night person anyway, but uh, it was a nice change of pace, I had some good people watching, some more followers came through, actually I had some people follow me, so I was thinking God about that, that was nice. found that I actually did five jobs in the course of two hours, so those jobs were uh, pretty long. Considering I stayed in United Kingdom, uh, I only have two towns left to unlock on, on the Euro Truck Simulator on the United Kingdom, so that was nice. I was uh, just staying local uh, in that country, just driving around, doing what I had to do in there first. And, uh, I guess next Friday, I'll see how I feel if I want to do two different streams, or I might just leave it to every alternating Thursday, because every time I have my normal Friday off from work, I try to do Euro Truck Simulator 2 on that Thursday night, so I'll see how I feel, see if I can work it in to my schedules, you know, if I want to do it, you know, back to back, because now I'm finding myself playing my old Batman game again, I went back to play Batman Origins, uh, just to replay it again, try to unlock uh, some extra achievements I didn't get. I want to go back, fight Shiva and uh, Deathstroke. You know, there's an achievement for beating both of them, not taking any damage, doing the whole counter. And uh, I gotta go back, replay the Deathstroke because he did hit me once, once or twice. So I gotta go back, do it again. But I didn't fight Lady Shiva yet. So when I see her, if I could just fight her without taking any damage from her. I should get the achievement, because it says only take damage from her, but I think... I don't remember if I fight just her, or if I fight her and some of her minions. I think it's just straight, just straight her. So I'll try to... I'll try to do that fight. But, uh, I digress. I'm getting away from those games. I'm just trying to do this stream, and then I'll just get into Batman for myself after this. I think I might go back to Arkham Knight, too, because uh, there's a lot of stuff uh, I didn't finish in the main game. You know, some puzzles here and there, uh, some case files, just like little simple things, and it bothered me. So now I'm just like spending my free time after I'm streaming, just going back in there and you know, trying to get all of those files and get all of the criminals taken care of, you know, everything. But I started with Origins, because Origins is, 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 actually, is actually easier. Arkham Knight froze in the Batmobile and some extra stuff, but uh, Arkham Origins, I don't have to worry about the Batmobile and you know, the Bat Jet and all that other stuff. Everything's pretty much ground level, just Batman himself, so I thought I'd tackle that first. I don't feel like... I don't have the patience to try to get into Arkham Knight right now and do all that extra stuff, so I said, let me just start with this Batman game first, and then I'll work my way into Arkham Knight. Also, the only thing you missed is I have two large trailers of dry fruits from Walmart. And I am currently taking them to Utah right now. 
I believe I'm in Idaho, and I'm going to... No, I'm not in Idaho. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Idaho's right here. I'm in Nevada, so I just came from Elko, and I'm going to Cedar City, Utah, and if I'm going to try to knock out some of Utah, and then hopefully go back to Colorado. My last stream of... I had to get... Uh, my last stream ended with me going back to California, uh, to my headquarters. So I had to do some jobs to get myself close enough to Utah, man. Now I can actually go back into Utah and then Colorado and, you know, keep doing what I'm doing there. And I'm still waiting for the Wyoming and Texas DLC for those states to drop. They didn't drop yet. They're still working on it. So there's nothing I can do there. How was it watching your friends play in the Batman series? I've never actually... Uh, I've never actually watched anyone play the Batman series. I watched, uh, I think that guy, uh, 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 MK, uh, what is his name? I think it's like uh, M Fire and Ice K, that person. On YouTube, I'll usually watch his playthrough and see what he's doing. But uh, I don't think I've actually watched anyone. Yeah, I've actually never watched anyone play Batman. I would usually just play the games by myself just, just to play them. If I got stumped or something, I would just like look on, online for like a guide. But uh, if, that's like the only time I would actually watch somebody if I was stumped on a, a puzzle. But I've never been able to. I should probably do that one day. Just get in there and you know, just watch someone play Batman. Because that's actually a great franchise. It's great. Yeah, it's 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 kind of selective taste. Because you know, you know, Batman being who it's not really a shooter, it's not really a full-on brawler, you're not really learning any... I mean, you're still learning fight moves and combos, but it's not It's not strictly like a full-on, you know, fighter game. You know, so you know, you'll still have your tools, you'll still have some of your combos, you'll still, you know, figure out when to actually use those tools for, like, the certain enemies you have to fight, you know, and vice versa, etc., etc. And then the puzzles, and then figuring out how to do the puzzles, and then, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it is, it is different. I think there's supposed to be another Batman game coming out. I think it's like, I don't know if it's called Gotham Defenders or Gotham, it was, it was something I saw on YouTube where it was literally, it was literally copying off of one of those, uh, DC animated movies where, uh, it was like, what, where it was trying to say, like, Batman was dead or something, and the rest of the Bat family, it was kind of like, a, I think it was like Batman Bad Blood, was it, I think it was Bad Blood, I think that's the one where Batman was, uh, presumed dead, and then everyone else was like, we have to defend Gotham, and they just had it on YouTube last year, where they were showing, like, Batwoman, and, and, and I think it was like Batgirl, Robin, most of them were just, you know, were just fighting in, in Gotham, but it wasn't Batman, and I have to Google that. So I'll have to I'll have to Google that. It looked it looked good. But it was pretty it's pretty much I think it's supposed to be uh, four playable characters and I think you can just I think from what they were showing, you can just pick one of the four at any given time, kinda like when you would play GTA five and you would drop in, drop out of one of the characters. I think it was supposed to be something like that, where you would have five, you know, five of the Bat family defending Gotham, and you would just, you know, pick any of the characters, I think, hopefully at will, and then go from there. Because I think they're all supposed to be on the same plot, and maybe, you know, and maybe some of them can do certain things that the others can't do. I kind of get the feeling they'll probably just, you know, do a puzzle, because I... I can't, I can't see them having a whole game, you know, and then devoting it to only one of the four. So I think the whole plot would literally revolve around the four, and you'd probably just use one of those characters at any given time for like certain situations. But they'll, they'll I know they'll figure out a way to, you know, to work it in. I've never been disappointed with any of the Batman games, barring, you know, barring the glitches and all that stuff that's been fixed and patched, but. When the game, you know, barring the patches and the glitches and all that stuff, when the game actually you know, plays right, I've never had any complaints with, for me, with the story and, uh, you know, the pacing and using the tools that Batman has at his disposal in those games. So I, I haven't had any complaints with it Stay myself. Left and then turn left. So hopefully that next game will, will also be good. Turn left. <laughs> trailer. I got that Walmart trailer. Yeah, it's a 
short one and a long one. Let's see if they let me. say about Batman because I'm actually getting really giddy like I'm being very patient because I actually want to play that but I'm also you know, I like to be consistent and actually stay to my streams and stuff so I'm trying to you know, I'm doing my stream but then I know immediately after I finish this stream I'm going right back into Batman because I, I like when I get those flawless combos and no one hits my character you know, I can knock out all the thugs use all the gadgets and then they don't hit me and then uh, Batman and Batman uh, Arkham Origin it scores you, you know, from like a D to S rank, so I'm trying to get like a lot of S ranks on there, and I think I'm trying to, I have to go on there and try to start working on the challenge mode as well, because I said I never got any achievements for those, so I would have to go and put all that time in and do that too, but when I do it right, it's, it's, it's very rewarding. The other character I liked playing was Spider-Man games back in the day, but I don't, I don't know if they have any Spider-Man games on Steam. I'd have to wait for that, too. I know they had it on PS5 and stuff like that, PS4 or something. Used to play that back in the day. Hell, I even remember when it was on Dreamcast. I still found oh, man. Dreamcast was before its time. It was unfortunate. You know, it came out at the wrong time. It already had competition. There was already the you know, already the PS1. There was other systems coming out. It just it just was at the wrong time. It just it just didn't didn't sit getting connect you know completely. I'm glad I still have all of my games for the Dreamcast, but yeah. I even still remember the logo and how it sounds. Just watching that little, the little orange dot just turn into a bunch of swirls, and it would just go do 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 do. I really like that, but you you can you, you can you can remember the, the sound of that Dreamcast, and then it would turn on, and you see the little triangle symbol, the orange light turn off. Oh man. I was playing the only Mobile Suit Gundam game that they ever added on the Dreamcast. I still have that one, the Mobile Suit Gundam 0079 Rise from the Ashes, the White Dingo unit in Australia. That was supposed to be a franchise. They wanted to turn it into a trilogy, and then a, a lot of people in America, it wasn't selling hot in America, and then they, they, they canceled that whole thing. Man. I was disappointed because I love Mobile Suit Gundam. If I love the fact that it had nothing to do with a Gundam. It was just a regular gyms. It was a regular unit. You know, they didn't have the RX-78. They didn't have any of the fancy you know, weapons. They were just straight regular Federation Mobile Suits. Just fighting regular Zaku 1s and 2s. And I, I loved everything about that game. You know, having, the, having the two teammates and the, the little sonar truffle. You know, trying to figure out where the enemies were on the map, listening to their movements, and you know, planning out the roots of your teammates and what to do, and if you know, executing your plans. And if they just said, "Oh, you know, we're not selling hot, so we're gonna scrap it," I was, I remember, I was so mad when they never, they never continued that franchise because I was like, "All right, you know, what are they gonna do? They're gonna do 080? They're gonna do Stardust Memory 83? What are they, what are they gonna do? They're gonna keep going with this? You know, like the war didn't end until like you know, early, you know." 0080, so I'm thinking, oh, they were just going to continue the story with that unit, and then they never did. 
Yeah, you remember that. Man, I re I remember the first I remember the first level, you know, diving off of that flying Odessa plane and you know, and landing your troops and then you get to see the colony debris. It was the shooting stars and then they're just like, "Hey, look, a shooting star." And one of the characters was like, "That's the dead spirits of all the people that we've lost with the with the Odessa drop." And they dropped the whole colony on the city of Sydney. And it was, oh man, that that whole the whole lore, they had everything right. That that game was the whole reason I went out and I got Mobile Suit Gun. Uh, I got uh, Mobile Suit. Uh, I think it was Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, Eighth, yeah, Eighth MST. I think I was saying that wrong. But I got the Eighth MST, and I still have all of it on VHS. And Miller's report. They received Miller's report when Shiro Omada had to go before the yeah, tribunal. Right. So they even had that on VHS, and I got that too. So I got the four the four the four VHSs and the fifth one for Miller's report for the tribunal. I still have a VCR combo for that, so I would have to pull that out enough whenever I can. But oh my god, it was great. Just like just like the the Dreamcast games, that series was great because it was just regular people fighting in the war. And you know, I liked that because I wanted to see well, what do the regular because you know, they have new types and you know, and all that stuff. And I said, okay, well, you know, not everyone's a new type, but it was nice to see the old types, like the people that don't have that latent ability. They're just straight intuition. They're straight experience. They were veterans. It, oh man, what was that? Oh god, I forgot. I forgot. Oh, what was that guy's name? That Zaku pilot that had the blue, uh, the blue guff. Ah, oh, damn it! What was his name? I remember his face, and he was defending of uh, Aina Sahalin. What was his name? Miller Morris. He took on like three gun tanks and. He was milliwopping the whole group, and he only let Shiro beat him because he just didn't want to fight anymore. After he knew that that was her lover, he was just like, this is where I'm going to... You remember that? Thank you, Norris Packer. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man, I remember his face. I remember... <laughs> I remember when he knew he was going to die, and he turned his sword sideways, and he popped that red smoke, <laughs> and they're like, what's the color of the smoke? And they're like, red, and she's like, oh, he's going to die. I was like, damn. He lifted a whole piece of a highway bridge in front of Shiro's uh, Easy 8 uh, Gundam. He just lifted it one hand and slammed it down. And Shiro was like, he was so scared in his life. He's like, this is, he's like, this is no Gundam boy, no Gundam. I was like, damn. God, man, that was a great, they, that was a great animated fight. Yeah, he was badass. I, I would have loved to see uh, I would have loved to see how he fought in space. If that was him on the ground with regular gravity, I would have loved to have seen how he was doing when he was fighting anywhere else. But yeah, he had that souped up goof. He had the he had the cable arm that could, you know, shoot out that that cable and then, you know, shock a unit and disable it. Oh, uh, it was it was slick. He was oh, man. He shot his cable into a water tower wrapped it around the water tower dropped into the building <laughs> killed the gun tank crew below him let go of the cable and just walked out of the building like a badass and he had literally two other gm easy eight <laughs> one with a beam with a beam laser <laughs> a, pul a pulse laser and the other one with a regular machine gun and he dodged their fire Still dove into the building and still killed that Very that nice. you know, that second gun tank crew, and then he had the gall, he had the gall and the ability to kill the last gun tank crew while being killed by Shiro because he let him he let him slice him, but his gun his gun cannon arm still shot the last gun tank and killed that crew, which I never understood why that crew was still there. They had all that time to run away, and they were still there. And he's like, well, I'm going to die, but I'm going to kill that last gun tank with this with this death. And he still went out like a badass. I'm like, damn. But yeah, that, those were some really good times. That still makes me very excited. I just got... I just got very excited and hype about all that. And I gotta go back and watch that. It was it was ridiculous, man. They had some And that's another thing that always bothered me about mobile about anything mobile suit gun them related. You know, the Xeon Forces always had the best badass pilots, you know. 
the Federation always had somebody that was like a pacifist or somebody that was whiny or just some kid. But you always had the Xeon forces always had like these, you know, mature, older, you know, villains and, you know, veterans. If, you know, if they're, you know you're, you, you, when I was a kid, I would always root for the Federation. Then, you know, when I got older, it was just like, man, a lot of these Xeon you know, aces, they were badass. And then just the writing just took them out. Because you know, I was like, there's no way in hell you're going to tell me, you know, if, if Morris would just, you know, would just get Millie Watt by Cheryl. I mean, if he, if, you know, if, if that wasn't, if that wasn't Ina's uh, lover, if he had no relation to her, oh, he would have Millie, he would have been, he would have killed him. The moment, the moment he shot the cable and turned off Cheryl's suit, he would have just killed him right there. He would, he would, he wouldn't have even had to have toyed with him. He would have just killed him right there and it would have been done. He would have just kept moving on to the rest of the forces. But just because of the writing and blah, 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 it was like, oh, I'm just going to die. I'm not, I can't, I can't kill him. I mean, he could have retreated. He could have found a way to just disable all of their suits and just badass walk down. But their writers are just like, nah, we're going to just let him die. He's still going to go out like a badass, but he's going to die. It's like, I don't, I don't, I don't really agree with it. When I got older, I was like, he would have been able to milliwop all of those units and still get out of there. It, it just, it just baffled my mind. <laughs> Let me see what you said. It, yes, thank you. I, I was in a, I'm in a Facebook group right now, and uh, uh, we, we were talking about uh, mobile suit, uh, anything mobile suit gun related. And if, you know, if a lot of the people in the group were angry at me. This was like a couple months ago, because of. Uh, they were talking about, you know, what's one of your biggest pet peeves about anything uh, anything Gundam related? And I said, you know, I, I just dislike that the Federation always has some whiny little kid in a mobile suit. It's like, you know, why can't they just have like a good ace? You know, why can't they have like a good pilot with like, you know, with, with good experience, good backstory? It always has to be some kid coming of age. He always has to, you know, he or she always has to doubt themselves. And then they get by by plot armor. They always get by with plot armor. It just pisses me off. And it's like, I just want one mobile suit shelf to just give me a legit older veteran. You know, he could be like in his late 20s you know, or early 30s, he or she. But just give me like you know, one mature pilot in a Gundam that has none of that whiny little angst. It's like, why does every show have to keep doing that for the Federation? And I love the Federation. Don't get me, I, I love them. You know, just like I love the Xeon and I, I, I get where both factions were coming from in the lore. But it's like, you know, I've seen all of these these badass units in the Xeon forces, you know, and I've never seen a, a real badass, you know, main character for the Federation, and I'm just like, I think that was like one of the reasons I stopped watching anything Mobile Suit related, because it was always like, the main character was always some kid, and I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. his name there was there was the older gentleman enough the older pilot in Gundam 0083 Stardust of memory I think his name was a uh, self yes yeah, self burning <laughs> lieutenant burning he was a badass he was a badass but he you know he died for the main character because the main character was still an experience he took a he took a hit to his GM and apparently he thought it was a small hit but it was a big one and it caused his unit to explode in space and he you know, he, he died in space. They couldn't rec they couldn't find his body. They couldn't find his space. You know, it just blew up and it just went off into you know, into space. And you know, he had like one of those really sad deaths. And, uh, you know, he didn't he didn't even get to die with honor. He just just died out there. I mean, it's just pretty much like war. You know, you don't get to die with honor you know, all the time. Sometimes it's just like a really bad experience. And he had a you know, a really bad experience. His death was just you know, you know just tragic. It was like a little internal hit and just went boom just blew up and went boom but it was the plot because you know he had like you know he he stole you know documents and paperwork that would have you know spilled the whole plot and they were just like nope plot armor he has to go and they just went boop you're dead oh lieutenant bernie he was still annoying uh i mean yeah, i mean you know he he had his moments you know he had his moments because, you know, he had to deal with Ko Araki. Oh, I can't say his last name right, but, you know, he had to deal with Ko. And, um, I get, you know, I guess he was really trying to get on his ass because he really, you know, he really wanted him to get more experience a little bit harder. You know, I felt before he died, he started to get a little bit more softer towards Ko and for his friend. Uh, his friend was Keith, that's right, Keith. And, um, 
but you know, it was already like you said, it was already it was already too late because he was already gruff to him the entire show, and then you know, before he died, like the last two episodes, he was a little bit you know easier on, on them, you know, and then he died, and it was just like, oh, okay, well, you know, his character is not here anymore. Oh, Camille, Camille Bidet. What was he? Uh, was that Zeta? Was that Zeta Gundam? I think that was the Zeta Gundam. That was like the the inner years. Yeah, you're right. He was. I think he was like one of one of the youngest main characters in any of the Feder in any of the Gundam franchises. Go straight. Now I can only I can only I, I know for me I can only talk about the UC timeline the regular UC timeline not you know, not the other alternate timelines of Mobile Suit Gundam like Gundam Wing all that type of stuff like you know, I've seen those shows but I've only liked the regular UC timeline you know, no extra magic none of this extra stuff just just straight you know these guys have mobile suits you know they're they're using their regular abilities boom 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 you know, you know there's nothing too out of this worldly realm just that. But yeah, for him in that franchise, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Also, I gotta be real with you too. That you know, we we are the human body is very is very ingenu ingenu is very ingenious. Nice sorry. Ride. Because I was literally talking to you the whole time, and subconsciously. You know, Subconsciously, I was still. Subconsciously, I was still driving this whole time. I, I honestly wasn't even paying attention to the fact that my character is about to go to bed. All that stuff, I was straight in this conversation with you, and now this journey is over. So that was, that's just amazing how we can actually just do that and just you know consciously keep going. And I got my two trailers, so now you know, I gotta get this guy some sleep. And then I'll knock out the next job. So let's see where we're going here. General Mills. And then I'll take a look at my phone. I'll see if you said anything else. Just let me just uh, park this truck first to get the stuff out the way. Oh, I came the wrong way. Lovely. Well, let me just loop it around real quick. Just loop this around first, and then I can... Actually, a really nice journey. Damn! Now I gotta go take a look at my my Gundam franchise, my my DVDs, and see what I have. Take a look at some things, cause oh my god, man! I I was always so ena ena um, enamored with the franchise, especially all the space battles. I was like, damn, these guys and, the, and the, how these pilots have to multitask in those big mobile suits. Oh man. That takes me back. Let's see, can I stay in Utah? What do we have for Utah? Give me Utah. What do we have? Ah, they don't have anything to I think I'm gonna have to actually travel to another location. And then, yeah, I'm gonna have to travel to another location because it's not giving me anything, so I'm just going to.
down the street to St. George. Also, I apologize. I just saw your message about Camille being the closest. Uh, I didn't see that specific part of your text, so now that makes sense that he was he was talking about him. Yeah, because you had him, and then you had Amaro. But then Amaro just grew up to be very jaded, and it was just kind of like, okay, I get it, you're jaded, you don't want to be a pilot anymore, you're just like, you're just all this angst over everything. And you're still having this fight with Shar Asnable, I'm just like, okay, I get it, man, I get it. But his plot armor was strong, too, I was like, damn. And then just like you said, you know, the only reason Amaro won was because the, you know, the RX-78 Gundam's armor was so strong in plot armor. Because even then, he didn't know how to actually start fighting in the unit. He was still lazy, you know, stumbling around, which is understandable because, you know, he was, a, he was a technical student. But then, you know, he still beats, you know, three Zaku-1 pilots just only because of the, the mobile suit. If it was like a gym or something else, he would have been wrecked by them. They would have just molly walked him. That would have been the end of the show. I mean, the Zaku one still had, I think, the the heat, the heat hawks off axe, I believe, unless that was the Zaku two. Have to look at that again. But yeah, they would have, they would have just wrecked, they would have just wrecked him too. So I'm gonna drive to. Uh, getting back to this game, I'm gonna drive to the next town, unlock it, and see if I can take that town and then go into another part of Utah. So hopefully that will that will work out for us. Okay. Straight. Oh, I came up a little bit too short. A little bit too short. Come on. There we go. What's that say? Waffle Topia? It does. Waffle Topia. <laughs> it does. Yep. ever made a legitimate Gundam video game again, just like that Dreamcast one we used to watch back in the day, I would literally buy it outright if I could. I would hope that it would come to PC, and I would buy it outright, because that I, I would love to play that again. I loved the fight that you actually could see inside the mobile suit itself, you know, how they created the inside, and then you know, your whole view was literally in that cockpit. And I like the fact that they never let you see third person or anything else. I would, I would play, I would play another one of those games. You know, if they made another one of those, you know, you know as realistic as possible as they can get. You know, not the, you know, not those multiplayer fighting ones, but if they had like a single player story driven one, like you know, that old Dreamcast time. Oh hell yeah, I, I would, I would, I would play that if I could get it on PC. I would play the hell out of that right now. I'd stop streaming this. I'd start streaming that. that game so much. I mean, I still have and I can plug in my Dreamcast, but you know, it's, it's you know, it's stuff like that. It's games like that, you know, where it's always tragic, where, you know, these games have so much potential, but then, you know, you know 
somebody got in the way or some company got in the way and they just said, no, forget it, we don't care about the fans, you know, we're only in this for the money, but it's like you have all of these, you know, these true fans and that would it would have been recouping all of this money, you know, I get, I get where the companies are coming from, you know, they're looking at, you know, we need to get this money right off the bat, but I'm like, you know, if they just, you know, brought it out, they would have literally had cult followings. They would have had people, you know, coming in, grabbing that, grabbing it down the road. It would, it would have start, you know, started breaking even for them. But you know, I, I understand, you know, you know, I understand, you know, a lot of times they don't want to take the risk. So I, I get where the companies are coming from. But you know, it always feels tragic when you know the potential was there and it was just lost for like, you know, simple reasons. Something that could have been avoided, but it was like, yeah, you know, they went that way, like a what if. Like in how some animes, you know, they can go from like different, re you know, universes and different realities. You know, I would, I would kind of think, you know, if there's an infinite number of realities and universes, and one of those universes, you know, you know, me and you are probably still talking in one of those universes, and they literally made more than one of those Gundam games, you know, something like that. <laughs> you know, so I'm always, I'm always thinking about that. What if that? That would have been great. That would, that would have been great. So now I need to get my driver to the nearest bed. So once I get up there, I can give him the nearest bed. I can look for jobs in St. George. Hopefully something will give me another job to delivery point to another part of, of Utah. And I can just stay right in this state and continue from there, hopefully. Stay right and then exit right. Watch this stream again once I finish this stream because I, I literally, I literally subconsciously just blocked out everything from that last job with the conversation. I was just subconsciously driving that whole time, so I'm gonna have to watch that part of the stream again for myself. Exit now. the roundabout, take the first exit. Exit down. There we go. Stay left. Recomputing. And I'm not supposed to go that way, but I did, so... Stay right. Then turn right. I just do not enter. But I'm gonna enter. Because I need to get over here. I can see if I can unlock a job in this town. <sighs> Anything for Utah. All right, there we go. Ventilation shaft to Selena, Utah. So that's good. So I got two more areas to unlock up there. So I'll be going in the right direction in a more northeast location. And that works out. Time to get the job done. That was already turned off. Is that a Burger King? That is Burger King. Okay. Give me gas.
Yeah, that was a Burger King. Dude, it's a roundabout. Come on. Exit now. There you go. Kind of love circles. whatever they want to call it. I call it a good time when I'm driving in my car, but on the game, it's still enjoyable. Nice houses over here, man. Stay left and then turn left. Of animes, I don't, I don't know if you just, if you've seen this yet, but I just watched that anime Yusuke on uh, Netflix. It was pretty good. I was really liking it. song was fire. Okay, here we go. Okay. We got here a ventilation shaft, yep. Yeah, 
yeah, it's only six episodes. I don't want to ruin anything. I'm not going to say nothing about it. I'm going to let you uh, I'm going to let you do your thing on that one. But it's black produced, black directed. Black main character. Let me know what you think about the opening theme song. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the opening theme song. And I'll explain that. Up. I think I'll explain my thoughts on that one if you remind me. Uh, probably like next week or whenever you see it. Or maybe tomorrow in the armor stream if you see it. You know, uh, let me know about the theme song. And uh, I gotta get. There's a part I want to get into about that with you. Uh, but uh, uh, besides that, I'm gonna let you do your thing. But it's yeah. Yeah, the first, I think of each each episode is thir 30 minutes, and uh, at least that, fir that first episode should be, uh, you know, it's, e it's either going to be hit or miss, you know, for, for most people, so, you know, I won't have any issues, uh, there's there's really no problems if you like it or if you if you hate it, but I know the first episode is really going to, you know, it's going to make or break it for, for you, it made it, it made it for me. It was one of those make it or break it things, because I'm just like, all right, let me get into the first episode. Oh, really? This is what's going on? Okay. All right. I'll keep watching. But that was me, so, you know. That should give you, it should give you uh, your answer right off in the first 10, 15 minutes once you break into it. I know I'm gonna play Batman, but now I'm kind of wondering how long do I want to play Batman? Because now I want to now I want to look at my my Gundam DVDs and stuff and see like, do I want to watch something again? <laughs> uh, damn. I can still go back and watch Shars Counter Attack. I think that was like 0093. That was a good DVD. I think I also have F-91 Gundam, too. It was totally... I think it was like 50 years after. You know, it was, it's, like, it's like at the very end of the UC timeline before they started to go to the other timelines and the other franchises. But uh, like F-91 was like 50 years after Char's counterattack. So you know, Amarone and Char, they both were dead, all that stuff. And all that Federation of Xeon stuff went out the door because those factions don't even exist. It was like a more corrupt version of the Federation splintered into some other faction and then some uh, some other group that wasn't Xeon, but they had the same 
they had the same issue. And the sad part about the F-91 movie is that was actually supposed to be a TV series, too. And it was supposed to be a little bit darker. You know, it was also supposed to be just like uh, the Zeta Gundam with, you know, like the death count and just you know, like the crazy depressing, you know, mood swings and everything. And, you know, you know, I guess some executives were like, no, we don't, you know, we don't want to do this anymore. We don't want this one. And uh, they condensed uh, they condensed the whole script into a movie. And I didn't even know that. When I was watching it, I was like, oh, it's just a movie. And I was like, no, this was, years later I found out, I was like, no, this was actually supposed to be a full, you know, 50-something episode, you know, series. And it was just like, nope, they just condensed it into a movie. You know, it was supposed to be the next generation, you know, going through the same story. Another kid, you know, another kid going into a mobile suit, doing the same thing as Amra. It was going to be the whole story all over again, but a whole new, you know, a whole new generation. And they were just like, no, we're not doing that. So, condensed into a movie. Yeah, gun. Yeah, yeah like I, I've never been disappointed with the franchises that I've watched and uh, that I have on DVD and box set. Like I, I yeah, I'll, I'll pull out FMS team and just pull out my old VHS just to rewatch it. Like if I never got the DVDs for it, I just got the straight VHS. And it's like you know, I'll, I'll pull out my old TV, plug in the old VHS, and I'll just watch that. You know. Like I got all my animes on one DVD rack. I have all of my regular movies and everything on another DVD rack, so I have them separate. You know. I got my VHS in storage, but if I ever want to pull it out and watch any of those animes on the VHS, bam, there it is. You know. And then everything else is straight DVD, so I can just pull it up on my computer for all I care. I just, I already have, to, I already have my headphones off. I'll just, you know, slap a CD in, you know, just go right into watching those, those like, I, like, even Gundam 0080, you know, that was, that was a, that was a good one too. The War in the Pocket. It was a nice side story. It was a nice side story. And that was another one of those tragic animes. It was just like, you know, you know, the, you know the main character loved the girl. Come to find out the girl was a Federation test pilot. You know, the guy was a Xeon, you know, you know, was a cowardly Xeon pilot that, you know, worked his way up getting courage, you know, defended a little, you know, the little kid. Ended up getting killed hey, because he knew he didn't want to kill her. It was, oh man, it was one of those tragic things. franchises they really do love their depressing themes and they really do love those you know tragic deaths yeah the uc side stories to me is where it's at like you know you'll have those big you know those big name brand characters you know duking it out all that stuff yada yada but then when you take like these regular people that you've never heard about and then you know you can actually take more liberties with them than you can with like the big names you know i i, I like that guy I liked in War in the Pocket was Mishka. He had the com he had the com the comfort. He had the comfort of Xeon suit. It was that big blue one. It had the shotgun. It had those uh, sticky charges. He was slapping those charges on Federation suits and blowing them up. It was ridiculous. He had the he had that uh, that chain grenade that he threw on the NX gun and he broke off its main armor because he slapped you know, he slapped that up those magnetic uh, charges on it I was like damn but he was a straight savage too because he had he had the shotgun I've never seen a mobile suit with a shotgun until his came up so he, you know, he was just wrecking Federation forces just hitting them with the fletching rounds it was ridiculous and those were like big rounds I mean you know, if these you know, if these things are like what, I think it was like what you know, like a 14 story tall mechs or a little bit taller than that you know, I don't even want to begin to be, you know to, to, to see what the size of one of those shotgun shells was in his gun but you know, he had a full on shotgun shooting into Federation mobile suits. I'm like, my, this dude is flying through a colony shooting a shotgun in a closed environment. I'm like, damn, this is brutal.
but he still ended up dying. I forgot how he died. I think uh, I think the the NX gun them uh, uh, pulled up its like uh, arm cannon, and I think it shot at him. Because I remember I, I, I remember they showed the inside of his co his cockpit was riddled with holes, and his uh, his flask was like leaking uh, the liquor. So I think I think he got shot by one of those those arm guns because of uh, it was like Mackenzie's last resort. She was like getting wrecked, and she just pulled it out and went blah, 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 and it just like hit him. I think I think that's how he died. I have to go back and watch that again, but if. Yeah, they, they you know they had a lot of those you know if they pulled those wins out of their ass type scenarios and those little side stories and stuff. I was like, damn. But I mean, technically, a win is still a win, you know, no matter how they do it. Because I mean, these are like fights to the death. They're not. They're not. They're not trying to look here and fight completely fair. They're trying to survive. All right, is this guy gonna? All right. Totally threw me out of my zone there. I didn't want to slam into the back of that for you. Customer expects that delivery, but detours. I haven't heard this beat in a long time because I've been doing really good on my delivery time. But life still happens.
delivery is so quick, I'm gonna skip this one because they're gonna need it right now. And give me all that money. still need a third driver because I only got two. It's trying to count me as a driver, but you know, which is true, but I mean, I want three. AI drivers bringing in cash for me. time driving up there just get to the next job so I can do this one and then I'd still be in Colorado and there's still Durango, Steamboat Springs. I'll do that one. Ready to roll. Right, the job is here. No, I want the big one. I'll take it. I knew it was here. I was to say it was going on here. There we go. 
do this. What can I do? Craft Heinz, there we go. Oh, it was the sound the back. Okay. That's a nice wide loop. There we go. Unlock this right here. Am I close enough to unlock that? There it is. There I got it. Western Storm. Coffee Break. Starbucks. Stay light.
still be covering all of those areas in between. fast travel to a headquarters you can't fast travel anywhere else so you have to drive all the way back to those DLC states and everything that you didn't unlock so it probably make more sense for you to have headquarters in areas that are you know, I still haven't fully unlocked so that probably would make more sense because then you know, I wouldn't have to drive between states I already finished you know doing jobs for them and just fast travel to my next headquarters and then you know pick a job from that state Back on the top of Mobile Suit Gundam, and uh, I know you explained to me about Camille. I thought it was uh, Lieutenant Self burning, so uh, you, you, my apologies to him because he was he, he was still a decent character. I felt he was probably the oldest old type of veteran that the Federation has. I think he was like in his 50s, and he was still you know, you know milliwop, and he was just you know wrecking other veteran Xeon pilots in better better suits. I think he had a command souped up GM. He had a GM command uh, mobile suit. But it was souped up with better uh, performance output. And I think all he had was the machine gun. He was still wrecking people with his with his unit. He even took him on a... I forgot what they called that thing. Uh, that big mobile armor. He even took that thing on and uh, he gripped it up with the with his mobile suit. They had a nice big climatic battle. I haven't seen anybody older than him in the UC timeline that was a badass Federation pilot. Uh, ace pilot. So the only mobile suit franchise I have that's not in the UC time. No, I think it is in the UC timeline. No, it isn't. Let me see. Gundam Unicorn. I think that's still in the UC timeline. I have that one. Yeah, I believe it's in the UC timeline because there was still that big of fight between the Federation and the Xeon forces, and then you know the whole mystery as to why you know. The Xeons were trying to get their independence and you know, why they were front into space and yada yada. I totally forgot that whole plot story, but uh, I believe that one was still you see a uh, timeline. But uh, yeah, Gundam Unicorn. I think that's the that's the last Gundam I ever got. It's the last one I ever bought. Yeah, because I think um, I think it's a little after of Char's counterattack. Because I think Char's counterattack was 0093, and I think it might have been like a year or two after that in the timeline. And then they fast forwarded to uh, the F91 Gundam franchise because they were talking about the the Lapis the Lapis box. 
it was like a black box that had all this this incriminating evidence on of the federation and of you know why they didn't want to give the zeons their independence of and then you know it's what caused the one-year war and i totally forgot what it was but i just have to pull out the last disc and just watch it on dvd but yeah, you're right. Now that I now that I think about it, yeah, you're right. Because it you know, it was UC because again, Xeon and Federation were only in the UC fit, uh, timeline. So you know, they still had the you know, the new Xeon forces because the new Xeon forces you know, pretty much arose after the One Year War. Because the Federation was was wiping was mopping up of you know, any of the last of Xeon. You know, Fighters left on the planet in space side, and then uh, you know, Zeon reformed into Neo Neo Zeon with new leadership, and then from you know, from 0079 all the way to 0093, and I think up to Unicorn, you know, Zeon was still there. I believe Neo Zeon was still there enough, Unicorn, and then after that, then they were just gone because you know, they they did a time skip 50 more years, and then it was just like, okay, those factions are gone now. I'm not going to talk about them anymore. Because they still had, uh, they still had, Federation still had those regular base, you know, GM units. Uh, that was from uh, Shar's counterattack, so they still had those units, and then, you know, they were still outfitting some of them, and, you know, still making some, you know, some last lifespan uh, changes to those aging units. You know, and by the time of uh, Unicorn, you know, a lot of those units were already aging, so they were ready for the next stuff. Uh, you know, next generation of mobile suits, but we never got to see that because then they time skipped 50 years, and the Federation was literally just a corrupt unit that could barely, you know, you know that could barely just hold its own, you know, government on you know, its own government and, and uh, territories on Earth, you know, much less deal with any of those uh, colonies anymore. You know, you know, you know, after they had that tight, you know, after they had the Titan debacle, you know the whole titan forces and you know, you know they were you know being aggressive towards civilians and yada yada you know, then that group got disbanded so you know pretty much the federation was just seen as you know completely corrupt past that point so everything after that was just they were already a, they were already a sinking ship it was just a matter of when the ship was going to go down Right. Oh, I gotta get off the highway anyway. Exit right. 
stay right, and then turn right. Turn right. Stay right, and then turn right. straight.
Stay right, and then turn right. Turn right. Go straight. Get ready to turn right. Turn right. Turn left. It's all over now. All right. All right, now we can park this one. Sir, no, sir. Excuse me. Mac to Mac. How you doing? Start pushing that way. One of those days. There you go, baby. There you go. Ah, nope. Didn't give myself enough space. Oh, let's fix that again. Yes. Fix it, fix it, fix it.
you're touching, you're touching. There you go. You're touching. Still crooked. like I'm just gonna have to keep the drivers I have right now. I'm still doing pretty good. Revenue is 436,000, but the end is you know, still bringing 229,000. can still upgrade. Five loaded bays, yeah. Nice. San Francisco. So it looks like I'll have to get back up to five hundred thousand and then I can knock out another driver, so I'll go from there. Productivity will continue. Okay. To my music. But to say my music just cut out. Let's see. I think I have enough for one more job, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it there. over here I can try to go to Lamar or Burlington and if I don't get it I can just knock it out myself before I start the stream so I think alright so I got the truck everything's good
turn left. straight. Fix my truck. Let's find a new route. Stay left, and then turn left. I always do that. I always come up too short. Truck maintenance repair.
hold on, hold on. Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? Oh, the job is right. I was about to say the job is right there. Legal U turn. Illegal. Self. I upgraded the fully upgraded the headquarters got an achievement for that. So now I'm just gonna devote my time to just building up the money I have for this uh, headquarters. Get those drivers and then after that I wanna Turn get myself a, a trailer for my truck. I don't have my own trailer yet. So now I have to get that Go too. Straight, then stay right. See if this job is still available. is not available. That is lovely. The job... The job doesn't exist anymore. Ah. Mm, it doesn't exist. Somehow I don't get to this job in time or something else happens, I'll just end the stream. I cost myself that one because I left up took the wrong road. I had to double back. And I also had to go take a rest before the job, so already probably expired by then anyway, even if I didn't miss the detour, that might have been what happened. But, always other jobs. So let's see where I can go from here.
Stay left, then turn left. the same place I was last night. Get a double, and I am gonna finish on a strong note with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
around the cows. Stay left, and then turn left. Yeah, that's a good drive so far. Turn left. I'm liking this area.
Oh yeah, you saw that school too? Okay. Yeah, some good areas around here in Colorado on this game. It's looking really nice. Man. I like how every time I pick up the last job to do for the stream when I'm already way over my time. You know, it's always like the nice long scenic route. Really nice. am I to my destination? Wow, I'm literally, wow. Alright, I'm literally almost done. That was, that was amazing. Do I have to go Lamar and then Burlington? Yep. I thought I was still far away from my destination and the game was just like, nope, you're close enough. It was just enjoying the sightseeing and then, uh, was just helping the journey just expedite a little bit, you know. It expedited the journey, journey a little bit better. Huh. Home. Pepsi. Highway time. You know what it is. straight how straight do I have to go yep it's a done deal Walmart <laughs> it's 
It's very funny, Fresh. Very funny. How's it going? Also, apologies to you, Fresh. Uh, I'm actually pretty much done my stream after this one. I've been streaming for two hours. I have. Uh, the only thing you really missed is uh, I upgraded my headquarters, so now I can unlock the Max 5 drivers, and I've been doing jobs in Utah, and I'm right now in Colorado about to finish my last job for the night. Uh, so I will be streaming again next Friday at 11 p.m. Eastern for part 16 of the American Truck Simulator, and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern, I'll be doing my Armor 3 again. I think... Next Friday, I'll try to get in some more of the European Truck Simulator 2. I did uh, my part four of that stream yesterday, so you'll probably you'll probably see that on my uh, my uh, Twitch. But, uh, good to have you here. But I know uh, I'm literally down the road from my last uh, drop off, so you know, just apologies to you on that one. Just so you know, I'm just doing two trailers. I wasn't able to show you that since I know you just came in. Finish this job. There we go. All right, this is. ice cream. <laughs> totally forgot what I was even bringing. Ice cream. Nice. Alright, so just gotta do a couple more jobs. We'll be back up to 500,000. Garage is at three out of five trucks and drivers. Just gotta max it out. Get it. Oh, good. It went from 76 to 81%. Productivity is good. How is she doing? ranking up. So she's 2.5. He was 1.4. So now he's 1.7. So he's coming up. He's doing his job. 
and she's just idle, but she must have just finished the job. She's back on duty. And I will have to get some new drivers soon and some new trucks. So that's looking good. I don't think there's anything I need. start purchasing some of these trailers for myself and then for my drivers oh, there's nothing there I'll probably get the wooden low boy double cuz I you know, take some heavy loads on that one too requires garage in Colorado Idaho Nevada I can get myself an insulator. That wooden low boy, probably not that one. Or the logger. Alright, so it looks like that's good for right now. Oh, I thank you for those that were tuning in. Fresh, you have a good one. Train, you have a good one. Um, again, I'll be streaming uh, part 16 Friday, next Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. I mean, 11 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow or tonight, I'll be doing Arma again. So Arma 3, Arma 3, and then I'll be doing uh, that at 7 p.m. Eastern. And then I'll go from there. Yeah, you take it easy, Cold Train. Um, let me know how you feel about uh, Yusuke when you watch that first episode of. You know, just hit me up about that tomorrow in the next stream if you want to, and then um, you know we'll go from there either tomorrow or pro probably probably next Friday. You know, because I know tomorrow I'll probably be like more f more focused into the mission because it's you know Arma, but we'll go from there. We'll see what happens, brother. Be safe, man.